Hello all. Alright, I have no control over this little loop de do thing in my hair. It, it just... Well, anyway, um, this is the second part of fusion reaction. This time we're going to concentrate on the fuels. Um, traditionally, they've been using like helium and hydrogen or helium and hydrogen and a few others that are terrible. But they want to get to a cleaner fuel, so helium-3 is supposedly the answer. So uh, let's go over to the board and just hang in there and you'll get right through this. It's not that hard. Okay, what is helium-3? It is an isotope. And there's the, uh, the period periodic number. Um, this helium-3 was theorized in 1934. It's one of the only two elements that we know of that have more protons than neutrons. They actually have two protons and one neutron, whereas regular helium has two neutrons. See, that's all you have to know. So why is uh, one, pro one neutron going to make a difference? Well, it all has to do with the vessel that the reaction is happening in. Let's just take one of the balls. Okay, like here's the donut part, right? Okay, so when this these particles are spinning around right here, going around in a circle, and colliding with with, with each other, this reaction causes it causes the neutrons instead of going where they're supposed to go because you can't control a neutron by itself with a magnet, so it just shoots off and hits the wall at very high speeds and at great heat, and causes a dent in the wall. So every time there's a reaction you're, with helium, you're getting damage to the walls um, in both directions of the vessel that this is happening in. And this material is very rare, hard to find, and you can't just replace it every so often. So they found that helium-3, since it has less neutrons, that they get a lot less damage to the walls. And you can almost have the wall last as long as the entire system will last. From what I'm understanding, helium-3 reacts at a colder temperature also. So you don't need those tremendous temperatures that you do with helium. A little bit cooler temperatures. But the main reason I bring this up is because helium-3 is not found on the planet Earth other than a little bit in the atmosphere from when we were doing above at, um, above ground testing of nuclear bombs, also including in World War II, spread helium-3 throughout the atmosphere in a very small amount. Not enough to be able to collect or use. Um, they can also get helium-3 from decommissioning nuclear weapons, and that's pretty much where they get all the helium-3 that we have to experiment with, which isn't much. However, we have found that there's plenty of helium-3 on the moon. Let's go back over to the moon. Oh. Let's go over. Let's go back to the board. <laughs> okay, so here's a piece of the moon, and you're probably thinking, well, how much helium three is on it? That's about the thickness of the helium three. It's about three to twelve inches thick throughout parts of the moon. That's the thickest part. Other parts hardly have any parts of helium-3 at all. So what these people are thinking is what I don't agree with, is they want to get over and start strip mining the moon, meaning the moon that we look at will no longer be the same moon. It'll just be a big gray dot with no features at all, just a big gray period out in the sky if you were to uh, mine the moon for helium-3. So why is there helium-3 on the moon? Well, it comes from the sun. Every time there's a sun exhaust that flows out from one emission to another, it hits the, uh, the moon, reacts with the soil, and turns into helium-3 and stays locked into the soil to about 12 inches in the deepest parts. However, I have a theory. Let's go back over the board. Okay, instead of mining the moon, why don't we move, mine the sun? Here's the sun. It's got all this stuff coming out, right? These emissions and 
spots, you know, stuff flowing out, you know, big huge eruptions. So what would happen if instead of mining the moon, we mined the sun, spacecraft, spacecraft, wires going across, lots of wires. These are embedded with the same thing that causes the reaction on the moon, same particles. So when this comes out, it has all these little particles stuck on the wire. Then after a while, over here, you take the wire and you roll it up, right? And then you take this rolled up wire and you put it into a chamber which then strips it of of its helium-3 and then redeploys the wire. Each wire has its own relay so that you can continuously get helium-3. Then you put this helium-3, compress it into a bottle, and you ship it off to a space station around Earth, which then transfers it down to the planet Earth. Since this whole thing is all theoretical anyway, why don't I be th theoretical and come up with my own ideas? You could do this with dishes, you could do it with wires. There's so many ways you could get helium-3 right off the sun, a lot less expensive than mining the moon. You're not going to hurt the sun in any way, you're not going to diminish the sunlight coming to the planet, all you have to do is put it on the far side if you want. Uh, you know, we're off to the side so there's no interference with the planet Earth at all, or any other of the planets. So, that'll conclude this uh, part of the video series on Helium-3. Very interesting. Now it's time to go ask the Tower of Truth, is Helium-3 a good fuel source? Okay, like before, we'll do a first roll of the dice. We'll determine whether we get an up or down side. Make sure we line this up. It's very uh, <laughs> crudely made. Okay, so we have now fused it with the Tower of Truth. And let's find out whether we have an up or a down first. Odd, down, even, up. Ugh. It's a four. Okay, so that's an even, so it's an up first. Oh, this is looking interesting. Okay, so it's an up first. Let's go ahead and uh, fuse this. <coughs> Let's find out what the, what the upside says, which is the yes side. We have a three. Three up. Okay, we're sitting up here at the... I'm a ways from the top, but that's a pretty good up. Now, for the last roll, this will determine the down side. Line up our little things, fuse it, and let's find out how far down it comes. One. One down. Well, there it is. So as you can see, it's two away on the yes side from where we started, right there. It's two up at the very end. So if you take what the Tower of Truth is saying as truth, it means that helium-3 is a fuel, but it, again, it isn't a really good one. So next video will be on maybe another type of energy we could harness. Until next time.